Hey there, Sagittarius, and welcome to your April 2021 Tarot and Oracle reading. I'm Infinity, and we are going to get into messages. Usually it's about uh, past, present, and future, just kind of how it rolls around here. We're going to start with the Moonology Oracle, then get into the Lightseer's Tarot for six cards, and then Sacred Geometry, the Archetypes and then the hidden world so sit tight get comfy i want to welcome my fellow saggies i am a sun sag so this is for you and me general reading though general reading this card wanted to come out it's time to release negativity oh uh, when isn't it that's what i say <laughs> it's always time to release negativity so there's our first card. Let's see what this is about, though, because negativity comes in all different ways and it, it stays in and around us um, for different reasons that we have that there. And, it, and negativity can mean a lot of different things. So let's see. I've definitely been working on this big time lately i hope you have been too but like i said it's always a time to release negativity but let's see what we get here for our tarot we're going to be getting six cards i want to shuffle <laughs> i'm gonna try that one more time Having a hard time shuffling today like that. Just they're not doing that lovely, whoa, balanced shuffling thing. Yeah, that's happening. <laughs> it's like chunks are coming together instead of them <clears throat> actually shuffling. Okay, we are going, we're getting close. Oh, there I say, we're getting close and there's a card right off the top. That'll be our first card, keeping it in the down position. Keeping it in the down position. Next card, card number three. Let's see it. Ooh, King of Swords in that third position in reverse. And we have our fourth and our fifth cards here that just surfed my my fingers and my rings <laughs> so let's get our last card here fellow fire sign and there we go okay let's see what we have here We have nine, whoa, we have it falling out of my fingers. We have nine of swords as our first card. Eight of pentacles. King of swords, like I said, and let me just check in here if we're at right side up. Yeah, we're right side up there. And next card, two of wands in reverse. Let me just check in here. Yep, in reverse. And let's flip over our next card, three of swords. <laughs> Very intense card, right? <laughs> three of swords. Next card, eight of swords in reverse. Okay, Saggy Sag. Nine of Swords, Eight of Pentacles, King of Swords, Two of Wands, Three of Swords, Eight of Swords. So we have two eights here. That feels significant with the Eight of Pentacles and the Eight of Swords. Let me just tap in here.
Okay, so we definitely have been through some difficult times. Gonna say I can definitely relate to this. We've definitely been through some um, just chaos and turmoil and things just not being settled and constantly, you know, like one thing or another, um, it feels like. So we've definitely had this. We've had some real losses. Um people coming and going it's been difficult but it's necessary at the same time and we know that we know that with this eight of pentacles we know that this is all part of the process and even though we're you know we're human we feel it we have really taken on a new station and position when it comes to allowing for the flow allowing for things to um develop as they should following guidance not not being a factor in things so much like just being present being being in in with the flow and and if things go in different ways that that we aren't to you know wouldn't want them to go but but we then we follow that flow and we see where that's supposed to go and it just continues we've definitely had um our guidance with us and we've been really like i just said we're following our guidance so we've definitely been connected this card always reminds me of um our guardian angels whomever you want to you know see this as i kind of see this very specifically as um like a archangel michael or whatever archangel that you relate to that you're you feel close to archangel michael archangel gabriel um your guardian angel that sort of thing is definitely like you're tapping in with with there's so many birds in this in this scene here with this uh king of swords but he's up high he's he thinks that he's not in movement he's he's thinking and he's receiving and he's giving and he's you know he's doing all of these things with his presence and his mind and his spirit so next we have two of wands in reverse underneath the nine of swords um yeah if you like look at these kind of take them and put them and look at them like together like this it's like even though it's like our human aspects we have feelings and emotions our you know upper level understanding of things um we can see for it's like she's up in, she's up in a building she has a higher perspective that she's looking through um but it is in reverse um Again, I feel this more as like a mirrored aspect when I look at this. All I'm seeing is this mirrored aspect with them. And so to do that, like if it was straight up, I wouldn't get that. That if it was, sorry, if it was straight up, I really wouldn't get that. That feel as much but with it being in reverse. And then when we take them and put them literally facing each other. It's like, that's just what I'm seeing here with this as far as, um, yeah, definitely. There's that inner human emotional feel, allowing for us to feel sad or disappointed, let down, upset, angry, you know, all of those things. Um, but this two of wands underneath of it, this eight of pentacles, um, in that next position here, um, is really saying like, like this, it's time to release negativity. I'm kind of feeling like, like that's, that's exactly what, what, 
what we've been doing, what you've been doing. You have allowed for it to, to, I mean, we can't stop it. We can't, it doesn't say it's time to stop negativity from coming around because we really can't control everything that goes on in our world. Yeah, sure, there's manifestations and and there's the law of attraction and there's, you know, certain things, but there are outside forces that are, are also in play. We're not the center of the universe. We're the center of our universe and our universes collide. And sometimes we need to deal with negativity that isn't something that we necessarily manifested. We're a part of other stories. It's not just our story. So negativity comes into our world no matter sometimes how hard we try to avoid it. I know that I can say that for myself so much. <laughs> and, and, if it's meant to be a certain way, it's going to be a certain way. And we need to acknowledge and have the same reverence, the same respect for positive energy as we do negative energy because that those are in balance. And if we don't perceive them in a balanced way, then we're the ones that are out of balance. So to deny it, or to just, you know, um, uh, like see it as outside of ourselves without it being in us as well, we're also in denial and that's out of balance. So really, like if I think about like the three pillars of the three pillars of health would be. um balance and love would be the other one and well definitely truth maybe there's more pillars as I think about it <laughs> but really quick it was just like it was like definitely we need we need to be in balance we need to see the light and the dark for for what those two things are positive and negative um, there isn't just one thing in our in our world and in our universe and see and what's coming up here next is this three of swords and this three of swords to me um, is and you see how that heart is connected in all these different ways and that's connected to her and she's like screaming about it um, and she's tied up as well so she's tied up with energy that really is outside of herself if you see it if you can really take a look at this imagery here she's it's her and this energy the heart is outside of herself the 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 all the ropes and stuff whoa coming right at you um down here down here you can see she is also tied up so she's tied up physically emotionally her love is tied up because of this these things that have happened um and I'm feeling like it's happened a lot. And it's just a necessary, it's like, you know, a lot of us tend to be the mirror, um, the empath, the Hakoita um, empath, the, the shaman, the healer who holds up a mirror to others of what what is negative and that gets projected in a way that involve that ends up involving us as a healer myself as I go through processes with people things definitely come up for people that I have to show them reveal to them and help them see sometimes it's it's taken in a it's brought up in a very organic way sometimes it's in a teaching moment sometimes it's it's just by being in the energy and people all handle that in a very different way um but because love is at the center of healing and i can say that at least for myself when i think about love and 
loving and being unconditional in love and all of that. I don't say it all the time and um, but I do have like this this tagline um, infinite love and blessings don't forget the key is to create I love you already and always live in love and the reason why I say those things especially I love you already is because when you come when you've really opened up and gotten to a place of forgiving and healing and connected to the web of life and of the the driving force of creation which is love it's really hard to know of anybody to know to without feeling love for the to to love like i love you already means i don't need to know you i love you already and um and but when you come from that station it's it's easy to be tangled up in the issues of other people and how they perceive love, how they deal with intimate relationships, how they are triggered, how, you know, all of those things. Um, I'm not saying that none of this has anything like the we like we're separate from from this. I mean, we're clearly a part of it. If it wasn't for our um our uh, role in the process, it would be a different thing, right? So we're in it to, for it to be a whatever it's meant to be for the other person, for us as well. So that's something to look at. So I'm thinking that what we need to do is just go back and see, you know, see who we've been connected to um, just generally um, and think about um, generally over the last year, five years, 10 years, who pops up for us? How do we feel? How does that energy with them resonate for us? If we and then just assess, is it positive or negative? If it comes up negative, then they're one of these ties, one of these cords that we need to release. So then that means we need to do cord cutting. And if you're unfamiliar with that, please check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. Uh, and there I have a ebook. It's called The Importance of Cord Cutting. It's free. And it has a companion meditation or two, actually, a pre and the, the main one. And the main one, I did an updated version uh, like two or three months ago. So I highly suggest you do... Th check out that ebook, read it, do your inventory. Um, I'm also feeling like, like I said before, if we're an empath, a light worker, a, a, a healer, a guide, any of these types of people, whether it's professionally or not, we, we do have connections to people more than more than the average person would and we need to maintain our field clear our energy make sure that we're constantly letting go and clearing energy especially since the pandemic happened with a shit ton of fear energy coming up for for the collective the entire world it's not just like the normal natural disaster where it's isolated and most of the fear energy is is isolated in one in that one general spot and it ripples throughout the collective and people feel feel the resonance but it's not so intense with the pandemic it's everywhere it's just this boom 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 energy of the pandemic continuing continuing to rise up fear energy over and over and over again literally on a daily basis so we need to more than ever maintain our energy time to release negativity like i said when isn't a time to release negativity um it's kind of like well duh, it's always time but i know it's talking about specific stuff so also think about that how much time have you spent clearing your energy saggy how much time ha i mean have you done energy clearing do you you know do you have things in your space that keeps your energy clear do you have crystals and do you light candles and are there essential oils and flowers and plants and animals that that are you know taken care of and loved and so you can see i have all this stuff everywhere because it's so necessary for um keeping the space clear and when you're somebody that that 
literally works with the the collective and transmuting energy either in the micro or the macro sense like I do to the extent that I do I I need to have this kind of thing in abundance but I believe we all do I think everybody should not everybody wants this much around them but um to some degree it's a really good idea you know have three house plants at least in your home go out and get to a crystal shop or go online and and find crystals that are good for for love for uh, psychic connection for uh, protection for grounding uh, and and for spiritual connection those five things and and expand from there um okay so moving on into the Eight of Swords in reverse being our last card. Um, we've definitely, and I see this, like it's definitely been like a thing where we've been kind of held back and stuck, whether it's been physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually in the past. But because we're in reverse here with this card, it's not right side up. It is in reverse and it's underneath this king of swords. So that energy is just coming down really strong. And like I said, this, this is coming through like Archangel Michael or any of the archangels. Um, and just see this, see how it's like his energy influencing and how she's looking up. Like she's like this, like she's literally like looking up. She's not pain. She's no longer in this energy. She's in this energy. So that's awesome. So what this means is that we are, we're not succumbing to fear, to old programs. We don't even have those programs anymore. It's like, it's not to say that there aren't still triggers that will, things that will bother us. But it's like when when the waters are mostly still because we've been following our guidance, we've been doing our inner and our outer work. We have, you know, made our environment. Re Look at her environment. It's like poosh. it's like majorly um, energetic and light filled. And she's and she's not letting anything distract her. She's allowed for this. She's felt it. She's, it's like, that was last night and this is today. You know, like we can't be in that all the time. Being guided, coming from a higher perspective. Um, and I also feel like a lot of this for as much as I said, just, you know, think about what is still connected. You know, what, what part of your life has negative attachments to it? It's time to cut those cords so we can move on into a, a more, a, 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 we always want balance. Balance, like we're always going back to balance and needing, and needing balance. Okay, let's get into our, um, uh, sacred geometry cards. It's our sacred geometry cards. I'm really interested to see what we get here. Because I feel there's this working kind of, we're working towards a brighter future here. Let's see what we get. What else comes up here? Metatron's cube. <laughs> Love this card. Take a look. Let's really take that in. So, the all, the Akashic Records. Okay, this is starting to form now. Kind of saying, when we release, when we feel, acknowledge, release, balance 
then we can receive, then we can be better connected, then we can have a higher perspective, then we can know what more we, we need that we're attached to that we need to release. And we can, you know, continue this cycle with this um, Metatron's cube card. We're talking about um, connecting to a really higher, much higher sense of understanding here. Okay. The all and the Akashic records. Every cell within my body has now awakened to the sacred geometry that has laid dormant within me. I can access the Akashic records of ancient civilizations. This pattern is one of the most important in, of the entire universe as it holds within it a map or blueprint of creation. Within this geometry are all five platonic solids. It has been drawn today, today as you are ready to activate the sacred geometry that lies deep within your cells. It is time to delve into the sacred knowings of the ancient civilizations and the Akashic records to create the energetic shifts that will allow you to enhance your life path and all who cross your path. Oh, this is so good. I'm so excited about this. Sacred geometry. When we add 78 lines to the fruit of life, we are bringing in the masculine energy as lines are male and spheres or circles are female. It is a complex weaving of information systems and by joining and connecting each of the spheres with the straight lines, we end up with Metatron's cube. Within this pattern, we are bringing together duality, male and female, yin and yang. Meta Metatron is an archangel in charge of the world. Metatron has one of two human pro was one of two human prophets who was rewarded with ascension into the archangel realm as he was so devout to his faith. The other is Sandalphon. And practical application. Metatron holds the key to all sacred geometry and its underlying wisdoms, the Akashic records, and ultimately the all. You can call upon him as your teacher and use it as a gateway to learning more about the hidden esoteric knowledge that lies within Metatron's cube through its complex weaving of informational systems and pertinent lines. Metatron can also be called upon when you are in need of some healing and clearing. Remember, the cube holds all five platonic solids from which all life forms are created. They are the building blocks of life found within e within everything. Our awakening is imminent to survive the ever-changing shifts and vibrations of our planet. Our yearning to learn and know is expanding as the recognition deep within us starts to reignite. And card numerology number three. Crystal suggestions, any set of platonic solids, crystal merkaba, um, danberite, and morganite. Okay, this is really exciting because, I mean, this is really telling us, like, we have really come a long way when it's come to um, our health, our wellness, our connections, our sight, our spiritual connections with archangels, Archangel Metatron coming in to say, you know, he is here to work with us and we, he has been working with us and to really um, think about and work with his cube because with the sacred geometry, because this will um, really help us to release on a quantum level um in our cells remember we started off with it's time to release negativity what i'm really feeling with this here is the more we get into higher vibrational states in meditation it's like when i think of metatron i think of connecting with him with the metatron's cube i think of being in meditation like to me they're just like and she doesn't actually say that here um, which is really interesting. Um, uh, but she just says, you know, that he, that you can call upon him when you're in need of some healing and, and, and that. So, but I always think of meditating and being guided by Metatron and working with my Merkaba as well. Like I see Metatron, Metatron's cube, Merkaba, sacred geometry, and just all of that being part, being like one, and I'll probably soon 
be doing a meditation um, with Metatron's cube kind of being at the center of it. I have done that in the past, but it has been a while. So that that is kind of coming up here for me um, repeatedly. And so I do work closely with Metatron, with Michael, with Gabriel, with Gaia, with Merlin, and... Um, and we will, we are going to, we are setting things up for, um, for a few different new, um, new things and just putting things out, um, in a different way, but I will be doing a lot more meditations in the near future, um, doing lives and meditations and readings and, um, color portraits, color energy portraits for people live, taking live phone calls, that sort of thing as well. But um, uh, the the connection part is really important to be connecting to um, to that those higher frequencies, and we really need to work on. Okay, that's our, that was interesting. I went from that to this, this, so, so let me just stop here for a second because I kind of went off here. We, um, we're getting into the archetype cards. These are Kim Cran's archetype cards. They are um, uh, separated into four different categories, the selves, the places, the tools, and the um, initiations or the themes that we could be different themes we can be going through in our lives at any given time. Um, however, we're just using the selves archetypes and the tools. So a tool just popped out and now we're gonna go back to the selves and I'm gonna get a self card for us, fellow Sagittarians. Oh, interesting. They were stuck. Okay, let's see what we got for the self. We got the one. And for the tool, we got the vessel. Oh, very interesting, this combination, you guys. I... Uh, or I should say this deck is pretty new to me. And um, so we have card number 30. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily know what these cards, you know, are right off the bat. It's, this is the last card for the selves. It is the one card. So let's get into this here. I'm going to turn on my light because it is getting dark. Okay, there Alrighty, uh, non-duality, the one, Unus Mundus, our ability to experience this archetype firsthand is limited. It comes in b brief and potent moments that we are left to savor for a lifetime. The one is both the energy that unites all living beings and our capacity to sense this intimate union. This archetype eludes us most of our lives, appearing as a concept in a distant galaxy. Yet, when we are in the midst of its power, a solemn reverence falls across all the land. We glimpse ourselves in the vastness of all consciousness and are neither small nor large within that field. We are neither important or unimportant. All duality fades away and we are left with what is the precious knowing that life is a gift and we are both the giver and the receiver of this fortune. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that so much. Uh, when light serves, loves, accepts, resonates, when dark ignores, omits, excludes. And it is said that Ohm is pr the pr primordial sound of the universe and that all other mantras are born from it. Simply imagining this possibility will activate the one. So just um, sitting and being in a comfortable position and just saying Ohm and just 
repeating that ohm mantra over and over again will get your frequency and your vibration in a certain pocket so you can tap in. I highly suggest it. <laughs> the Anas, so, sorry, Unus Mundus is the circle representing the unity of existence. It is possible that the beginning and the end of, is it possible that the beginning and the end of all things is love? Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, wow. This is a very powerful card, fellow Sagittarians. The one. And talking about this um, this energy. And I totally, I, I totally understand this energy. Um, now when I connect with my with my spirit tribe, my guides and guardians, and they ask me who I am, I say, I am nobody and I am everybody. That is my identification. I don't, I don't use my name, my soul essence of what I know that to be. I don't have an identifier when they ask me because I know they're, they're, t they're asking me to remind myself that I am nothing and i am everything i am i am like she says here you're not neither important or unimportant it's just you are it is and um infinite that's why my spirit name is infinity because it's to remind not only myself, but others, everybody and anybody who comes across me in my name to remind you that you are infinite. You are not finite. There is no beginning and no end to you. You have always been in one form or another. And that is the case for all of us. And, and being in that pocket, that zero point suspended held by everything and nothing at the same time is a very freeing blissful place to to be at to be centered in and that's why she says it's not something that's that's sustained very often for very long it comes in brief and potent moments there will that we are left to savor for a lifetime um it is the one is both the energy that unites all living beings and our capacity to sense this intimate union. So it's this, that's that, the one that we are all kind of, one is all kind of energy. Understanding that there's this current of energy that is one big thing and everything is just a piece of that one big thing that they're really is not separation separation is an illusion and the more we can remember that retrain our brains to live from that space as much as possible more moments stacked upon themselves weaved together through our lives the happier we will be because we won't be connected to those things of duality like like our experiences are very tend to be very dualistic to get us into that balance all right let's get into the vessel uh, um. so the vessel is the second to last tool it goes the vessel and then the thread oh what i just talked about weaving threading <laughs> okay the vessel here we are with the vessel let's take a look at this card we have light we have dark we have coming out of okay the body the container the cup the vessel may be the most powerful ar archetypal form on earth it is everywhere. Cups hold hold liquid, stoves hold fire, our bodies hold organs, our homes hold families. Through the simple act of separation, 
The vessel protects what it contains. Nests protect the eggs. Saving accounts protect our earnings. Even the planets are contained within their circular orbit. When this card appears, it's time to assess what is being held together and how. Is the vessel too tight, too loose, broken, empty, full? Or perhaps there is no vessel at all and the contents spill ev in every direction. It is natural natural for structures to be formed and eventually fall apart the vessel has a life cycle that must be honored is it time for you to build break or repair you must find out whoa okay when light stable strong and graceful when dark trapped being in a bubble the physical body is the most sacred vessel of all. It is the one in which you reside from your first uh, breath to your last. It may need your attention. Uh, the mentor and the healer must pay particular attention to this archetypal form. Healing cannot be sustained without a strong container. Yeah, no shit. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so we get the vessel metatron's cube the one the vessel and the one together i gotta tell you i mean these two these two together are are very oh boy very meaningful fellow saggy um because it is saying it is really time to to pay attention to the energy of the universe and how it affects the vessel the body and trust me as somebody who was sick as a psychic physical empath and medical medium and natural born energy healer and <laughs> through the uh lineage of my ancestors a shaman I am not really knowing any of this stuff until these last several years, having a disconnect from my understanding of energy, of, of being connected to everything, of my body and, and understanding it and really feeling like my body was, was a trap, was a prison. I can tell you that being guided to understand energy, understand my body, understand um, through through being guided through meditation and um, in astral, in the physical, through the internet, through psychic awareness and everything in between, that it is not until we really think about our vessel our body and really what is what gets affected or what how it is affected and by what by light by dark by pressure by by others um like for me i feel in my body exactly how other people feel in their bodies now i have to tap in to get that but most of my life, it was just willy-nilly coming at me. So I was constantly in some state of imbalance and pain. And it was a major problem until, I mean, I was chronically ill and on disability. And 50 pounds to 60 pounds heavier than I am now. And everything was not the way it should be for my vessel, for me. For me being someone who is meant to live in this state of oneness because of me being what I am I am in this state of oneness so my vessel is directly and proportionately affected by that and if you Saji are watching this then you're somebody who's like that too you're also somebody born in that last um set of weeks of the of the year and we tend to um, be in, the, in a different type of vibratory field when it comes to energy. We're also fire signs or earth signs at the very end with that Capricorn. But um, speaking to the fire signs, to the Sagittarians, we are, we're a flame and we are always um, getting air and energy and more flame that comes into the into the body so we need to pay a very particular attention to that um or else we will be trapped and 
things will be very uncomfortable. So it's definitely time to think about energy in your body. And w going back to the very first card, it's time to release negativity. So we're really, so in different ways, we're getting the message that we need to pay attention to our connections what we're still connected to energetically that even may, you know, people, situations and, and experience could be over, but energetically still tied to maybe not even on your side. Maybe you can you can think of a certain situation and it doesn't invoke negative feelings for you but really search yourself is how d might the other person feel if they if if you feel like there's some dissonance there then you need to cut cords for both of you um so you're not experience the experiencing the energy coming and attaching to you through their negativity even though you're you may be neutral or feeling fine or feeling loving or whatever their negativity is still attached to you is what needs to be disconnected um, because the vessel needs to be um, healthy uh, in a state of wellness to be able to uh, pick up on the energy on like the pure energies around you or see this is what happens if you're not energetically cleared and healed and in balance and in flow then you're mucked up with energy. If you're mucked up with energy, then you can't specifically feel what's coming in. You may feel like out of sorts, upset, angry, in pain, tired, fatigued, anxious, stressed, sad, whatever, but you have no idea really what, what this is. Or you may feel actual pain in your body. You may get stomach aches, headaches, shortness of breath, body aches, joint pain, things like this. And you just take it on and you think it's you. And and that could be a, a culmination of something like fibromyalgia, which is what I was diagnosed with. But the bottom line was that it was energy within the body that was creating all of these feelings and symptoms that my body was really dealing with. But it wasn't energy. It wasn't my body that was um, that it was necessarily uh, um creating the energy it was i'm absorbing the energy but it wasn't leaving because i didn't know what to do with it so it stacks up it stacks up it stacks up it stacks up and then it makes the body very uncomfortable you you then that's when you get chronic fatigue things like fibromyalgia and other chronic illnesses because there's only so much energy that the body can naturally process and if you don't know how to take care of that for yourself how to clear that energy for yourself how to release that energy then it's going to stay. And that's when you get to a point where things are really bad physically, energetically, spiritually, and all of that. So I really, truly hope that you're somebody that does take care of this stuff, that you do know about yourself. If you're an empath, a light worker, if you're somebody who actually does actively work in spirituality, connecting to others um, and their energy and their energy fields and their guides and guardians, it's really important to keep yourself in a cycle of being being cleared um, and I do have an ebook called negative energy and how to wait it's called psychic attack and how to eliminate negative energy again free on my on my website please take a look at that um, okay so we're gonna get into our last card which will be a hidden world Oracle okay And this will be our last card. I do hope you've enjoyed this read and that it resonates and that um, it validates and that it's helpful for you. If it is, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you're into energy updates, spiritual information, um, tarot and oracle reads in different forms, different links. Uh, and again, I'm going to be doing all sorts of new stuff with lives and meditations and um, painting and all sorts of stuff. So I really hope that that you're into that and you want to join and that you're a part of it. Alrighty, our last card, Saggy, for us is card number 42, Tree of Souls, Collective Wisdom, Kinship Group, and Library. Take a look at 
at that. It's a lot of connection going on there. Like we were talking about, we got the one. Now we've got the Tree of Souls. Card number 42. So a lot of connection being talked about here from the get-go. Okay. Collective Wisdom Kinship Group Library. In the hidden worlds, we have places and beings who are literally the storehouses of the wisdom of the ages. The Akashic Libraries do not always appear as books of light, although this is one of their forms. So too are the whales and their song, which also hold part of the great wisdom necessary for the universe to continue. This tree is but one of those places, and perhaps it is yours. This tree, when meditated upon, when connected with in a true sense, can offer to you the wisdom of your soul kinship group. Ancestral knowledge, yes, but there is a collective wisdom, a soul group of which you are a part. And through connecting with this tree, imagining it, feeling it, serving it, honoring it, you can help keep the balance of the universe alive. This tree hosts the spark of your soul and all of its wisdom, which is, as we have learned, vast and impossible to ap uh, apprehend within one lifetime. Every moment of wisdom you have, every second in which you choose to express kindness and compassion feeds the tree of light, this tree of souls. And in return, this nourishes all the other souls connected to the tree. For we are unique and individual souls, yes, yet we are one. And this is a place where we come together, a tribe of light, leaves on the tree, its roots shining and vast, and we are sheltered, nourished, and keepers of the light. This is your soul tree. Know you are not alone, and that every act of what you would call goodness benefits not only others in the human world, but the progression of their soul through its path in the universe. Every soul a star shimmering upon this tree of light. Oh, it's so awesome. And illumination, I belong to the universe and I am part of a great collective of souls who help and nurture each other throughout lifetimes. Oh, goodness. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So with Tree of Souls, we're definitely talking about like a floodgate fellow Sag, a floodgate of connectedness coming through of like soul family, soul mates, and we have more than one soul mate and only a small section of the population may have a true twin flame or twin soul. I know it's kind of popular belief that everybody has a twin flame and it just doesn't work that way. But we all have multiple soulmates in this lifetime coming through to us in, in very various ways, a lot of various ways. And so this, when I'm reading this, it's everything that I read, of course, but I also was picking up, especially there at the end, like, what is coming through is is connections like a lot of this has been about connection with others healing with others and also what it talked about here is as we we connect as we heal as we help and we're kind and we go through life here it helps everybody it helps the whole tree it helps our whole tribe of souls that we're connected to and that's the way like we do healing when when i'm doing healing with mother gaia and with the archangels and with Raphael and and all of that we're we see it as not just healing that one person that we're healing. We start every single one of our healings tapping into the collective, to the entire world and to Gaia. And then we get into it with that person. And we always go in saying, as we heal one, we heal all. And that is the energy, you know, the one. It's, it's the one is the, is is that non-dualistic way of 
computer getting glitchy. Um, it's that non-dualistic way of of thinking about everything. It's like it's it's all this. It's all one thing. It's not separated things, separated people. Even though we have our separate vessels, and the vessel comes in saying. We need our vessels to separate things. At the same time, we have the one saying that even the, the vessel is all, every vessel is part of the one. It's also an illusion that things are separate. Um, so we have to see all sides of this message. It's very, very interesting. And then, of course, the Tree of Souls. So we're very specifically asked to connect to this Tree of Souls, to go into meditation, to look at this beautiful tree, this beautiful light soul filled tree and see ourselves connected to it, connected to those souls, the ones who are on the other side, who are sending their love and and vibrations to us for, for us to constantly be picking up on on those um, energies, the the wisdom that they send us, our psychic connection. Um, when we're and then I'm seeing again Metatron's cube here. So to 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 tap in with with that sacred geometry, with the Merkaba, with our souls, with the tree of souls, with the one getting into our body, paying attention to our chakras. This is all very important at this time because there's going to be people coming like real people in in the embodied in like incarnate that we want to be as in this one kind of resonant frequency so another one can blend with us without there being um dissonant energy so it's really important fellow saggies to go through the motions of of clearing out energy so we can make the way for these soul um connections to come through whether it's from the other side to us or from this side coming to us we need to set the stage we need to put things in a certain place in a certain order so when so when the the bell rings the door swings open and there's nothing getting in the way of that think about that because the bells are always going to ring the full moons the new moons the stargates the the turning of months into new months new years into new years are always going to happen so so the bell's gonna ring the latch is gonna release the door is gonna try to swing open it's up to us with what we have as far as energy that's going to impede the flow of the door opening if the door can open all the way then the flow of energy has has an infinite way of coming to us right but if we have blockages in the way then that door can't open fully and we have more limited ways for things to come to us and there's blocks that we need to take care of instead of dealing with the abundance that's coming in and the love and the support and the guidance and the bliss and the harmony and the creativity and just working from that we have to put energy into working with those blocks so that energy can come in. And what this is saying to us is we've done a lot of work in that regard for ourselves and for others. Let's just go and fine tune this business, really open up to our higher guidance we're talking Archangel business here, Gaia, Archangels, the Tree of Souls. I mean, all of these are really intensely potent energies that is saying all we need to do is tidy up our energy field, tidy up our, our connections release and receive because it is coming we do we do have we do have love coming and what's interesting is the way these are sitting here all i see is this heart popping up from this tree look at this like i i didn't set that up on purpose it's just this where the book is sitting and and how like the the tree of souls card can't move down so i can't see this this girl in distress 
So she is fading as we speak. <laughs> she is literally, let me get this right. She is literally fading as we speak because we're thinking about all that we need to release. And just the act, just the act of deciding that and understanding the intent that's like, okay, I get it. It's not about abandonment. It's not about not caring. It's just about taking care of our energy and making way, snipping through things that are in our way, moving it out of the way, not not having any kind of negative energy towards those things where we want to do the we want to do the opposite. We want to send it love, have a neutral space, bring the energy back to us and that be that. Okay, fellow Sag, I want to thank you so much for being here with me for this April reading. It was really awesome, really deep. I hope you follow the guidance and please check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. I do offer a free two-hour consultation for my Evolve Now program. It's deep, deep healing, deep connection with Mother Gaia, Archangels, Merlin, and it comes with a month of... Uh, coaching with me after the healing and i have a lot of other services on there as well Terran oracle services for your animals services with with crystals uh mediumship psychic uh advice and a whole bunch of other stuff so please check it out until next time have a beautiful april and i wish you the best bye for now